A History of Tarsdale Avenue, Part 2 of our slide presentation. Tarsdale Avenue was named for the neighborhood at the northeast corner of the city of Philadelphia, to which the road leads. Charles McAllister in the 1850s named the area after his ancestral home in Scotland. In its earliest days, Tarsdale Avenue was primarily a residential street and one which featured open space. It was also formerly known as Adeline Street, Emmeline Street, and Cortland Street. The map you see above is an 1898 bird's eye view of Tacconi, and the Historical Society of Tacconi's office is a hand-drawn map from 1880, showing something called Colney's Thicket in Thomas Woods, south of McGee Avenue, around 1880 and that shows in the top left portion of the slide you see in front of you. A creek at one time crossed the avenue just north of Levick Street, and a ball field was situated east of the avenue near Longshore Avenue. The creek that I refer to contributed to the collapsing homes in Wissanoming which occurred at the turn of the century, around 2000. This view shows Tarsdale Avenue looking south from Tyson Avenue, prior to the trolley tracks being installed, probably around 1900. Pay attention to the triangular projection at the house on the right-hand side, just above the American flag and below the American flag that's projected from the street pole. This will be referred to later in the presentation. This view obviously shows a preparation of some sort of parade being held at the turn of the last century. If you walked a block south to Distant Street and turn looking north, this would show the avenue between Distant and Tyson right after the installation of the trolley tracks around 1904. The trolley line installed by Rapid Transit Corporation of Philadelphia changed Tacconi drastically. It ended the community's dependence on steamboats and railroads to get to Center City. It shifted the access of commerce away from the Delaware River and ultimately Longshore Avenue as well. The installation of the tracks helped to diversify the community as well. Within a decade of the installation of the tracks, an African-American settlement and an Italian settlement North of Princeton Avenue. If you turned and looked 180 degrees from the previous location at Distant and Tarsdale, you would see the house of Peter Costello. He was a prominent builder from Tacconi, a founder of the Holmesburg, Tacconi, and Frankfurt trolley line, and ultimately a member of city council. This house was demolished around 1935 or 1940 to improve it with a gas station. The same site was developed with 7-Eleven in 1978. Take notice of the building to the rear of it, fronting on Tarsdale Avenue. It was built as the 41st Ward Republican Club, circa 1890. The building is still standing today. One of the first developments stemming from the installation of the tracks was the Tacconi Library, known in its earliest days as the Carnegie Library. This photo was likely taken when the paint was still drying inside. Employees are likely standing out in front of the place, posing for the first picture. This institution replaced the third floor of the Tacconi Music Hall, where for two decades the Keystone Scientific and Literary Association served the needs of the community. The land at Noor and Tarsdale for this property was given by Jacob Diston, and building funds were provided by Andrew Carnegie. Four pairs of frame-style twin homes were moved to facilitate the construction of this building, and those houses were moved to the 6800 block of Van Dyke Street, where they still sit today. This shows one of the first businesses to locate to the new avenue, circa 1910. It is William S. White & Son Cigar Store. Although in hindsight the new tracks clearly ushered in the 20th century, in Tacconi there was a lot of skepticism regarding the success of moving one's business out to Tarsdale Avenue. Some other examples of pioneering businesses during the first decade of the 20th century are Hearst Brothers Plumbing at Longshore and Tarsdale and Ed Dariff's Grocery Store, which moved from its Longshore and Tulip location to the 6800 block of Tarsdale. John Rapp, who served as president of the Tacconi Trust Fund at the time, reportedly told Mr. Dariff that although he had adequate credit to make the move, he felt he was a fool to move way out there. This glimpse of a 1922 social outing shows the building on the right, which was located at the southwest corner of Longshore Avenue. Today it's approved with Sovereign Bank. The row of stores seen on the left shows Ed Darris' store, with all the attached buildings he developed on the right between North Street and his grocery store. Darris' store would eventually pass to Ed Jr., who ran the store into the early 1990s until it closed. 
deeds for these properties still refer to the rear alley built behind the stores as Darif's Alley. The look on this gentleman's face says it all about the trolley's impact on Longshore Avenue. The Tacconi Music Store was located between Hegerman Street and Edmund Street near the Tacconi Music Hall. The bank at Tulip Street and the Tacconi Music Hall did not survive the Depression, and other prominent users, the Liberty Theater and several specialty and department stores, also moved to New Avenue. Despite the influx of trolley service, some blocks like the 6600 block of Tarzell Avenue remain largely residential. The empty lot seen on the left of the screen was ultimately developed with walkable style mixed use commercial buildings in the 1930s with upper floor residential uses. After the Depression and through the 1960s, Tarsdale Avenue was at its zenith in terms of its walkability and its critical mass of shops serving virtually every need for Tacconi's residents. Note the Art Deco facade of the Liberty Theater on the left side of the building on the 6800 block, which had moved from its modest Longshore Avenue location to become the centerpiece of the new Tarsdale Avenue. Other prominent additions to the avenue at that time include Woolworths at Longshore Avenue, Thames Ice Cream Parlor, Guggenheim's Dress Shop, and Harvey Long's Drug Store. In the 1920s, Jewish businesses became more prominent in Tacony as well, including Joe Rosenwald's Grocery, Myra Zier's Shoe Store, and David Bree's Ladies Shop. The Rubin Brothers Department Store, which opened in 1905, stayed on Longshore Avenue. The son of one of the founders of the department store, Hyman Rubin, had a tremendous impact on Tacconi during the 20th century. He will be referred to later in the presentation. As the 20th century progressed, Tarsdale Avenue's aging infrastructure began to have a detrimental impact on its appearance. The worn tracks and Belgian blocks, the rusted poles, began to hurt the commercial appeal and viability of Tarsdale Avenue. Some of the residential blocks, including the 6500 block of Tarsdale Avenue seen here, began to see conversions to multifamily uses. This increased density also began to have a detrimental impact on the commercial viability of the avenue. By the mid 20th century, areas at the perimeter of the neighborhood, near Levick Street in the south and Cotman Avenue at the north, got built up with more automotive-driven commercial uses as a result of the Tacconi Palmyra Bridge and ultimately Interstate 95 construction. An example of that seen above is Alva Chevrolet, car dealership, built at the corner of Cotton and Tarsdale. Later, this was replaced by Aguino's and Roy Rogers Restaurant. Today, a Boston Market restaurant is in sight. Near Levick Street in the south, a Wawa was developed, a McDonald's, as well as several gas stations. Ultimately, the Wawa, which was once on the east side of the avenue, moved across Tarsdale Avenue to the corner of Levick Street and Tarsdale Avenue. Speaking of Cotman Avenue and Tarsdale Avenue in the mid-20th century, who could forget Leonard's Diner, a staple Tacconi business in the mid-part of the 20th century? Today, a Dunkin' Donuts is on the site. Another blast from your past, if you are old enough, would be Tony Cascarelli's Atlantic Gas Station at the corner of Princeton Avenue. Younger folks may remember it as Tony's Arco Station or Tony's Sitco Station. Tony ran the property at the corner for many years. This wonderful shot from the 1960s depicts its original porcelain enamel facade and the slogan, Keeps Your Car on the Go. Tony was famous for tributes to Frank Sinatra in his window whenever he would come to town and also gathering Tacconi folks together for trips to Eagles games in the big Super Bowl-bound bus from 1981. By the 1970s, the advent of suburban shopping malls and urban strip centers had begun to take a negative toll on Tacconi's shopping district. This glimpse of the 6900 block in 1978 shows a fully built-up avenue, although the old Fisher's Hardware Store had caught fire seen on the left of the shot just prior to when this was taken. Some may argue the property has never fully recovered since that point. Thrift stores and used furniture stores began to replace the more traditional retail or office-oriented users, as demand from traditional users diminished. The Tacconi Business Association and Tacconi Civic Association formed in the early 1980s to help boost both the commercial and residential sectors of the community. This snow-covered scene from the 1970s shows the intersection of McGee Avenue, 
Tony's Meat Market was a staple of Avenue shopping for decades in Tacony. Brooks Pharmacy remains today one of two neighborhood pharmacies doing businesses at its same location on Tarsdale Avenue. This is an early 1980s glimpse of the corner of Tyson and Tarsdale Avenues. It's an excellent example of how residential uses were adapted to commercial uses after the center shifted to Tarsdale Avenue. The pair of twins and single seen here were adapted to provide a shoe repair store, hairdresser, insurance office, and the headquarters of Fidelity Federal Savings and Loan on the left. This institution was founded by Hyman Rubin, who raised his family above the bank and led various business and community organizations during his lifetime. Rubin died in 1974, and his wife Miriam helped to found Temple Menorah, which still is a staple of Tacony, on Tyson Avenue. Rubin had a popular high neighbor column in the Northeast News and was a popular business leader for decades in the community. Note the triangular projection behind the Cobra style light fixture on the right, upper right of the photo. This is the same triangular projection to which I referred to in the 1900 shot at the beginning of the presentation. This entire building, all of these buildings on the corner were demolished in the late 1990s to facilitate the existing bank facility and office facility, which is at the corner of Tyson Avenue today. This view of a commemorative trolley was taken in the early 1990s when it was on a special route going north on Tarsdale Avenue. This is what the trolleys first looked like when they came to the avenue. Note the manual Route 56 sign in the upper left-hand corner and the word Cotman Street before it was termed Avenue. In the background, you can see the automotive-driven development discussed earlier on the block near Levick Street. The Salvation Army, which is located on that block, was originally built as an auto dealership. This is another shot of the 6900 block of Tarsdale Avenue, looking south from Distant Street in the early 1990s. Who could forget the familiar retail brackets of Kessler's, of Smarkola Real Estate, or of the Rite Aid store in the middle of the block? Not long after this shot was taken, Smith's Hardware moved to the Rite Aid location and a law office to the Smarkola Real Estate office. Kessler's closed and became various users, including a thrift store, daycare, and chiropractic office until, in January of 2011, a tragic explosion killed a PGW worker and the site is now vacant and awaiting new development. Note on the left, behind the Quick Start sign, is the old Republican Club building, which was used for years as Kathy Catering Facility and is known today as Bullseye Darts. Just south of this, a post office building in the early 20th century served the community before its moved to Longshore Avenue in the 1940s. This tragic shot of the old Woolworths building last decade at the corner of Longshore Avenue was taken just after a fire. Again, with this property, some may argue the property has never fully recovered. It is about this time that the Tacony Community Development Corporation was formed in an effort to bring new business to the avenue and to increase the commercial viability of Tacony. This picture was shot in the early 2000s around Princeton Avenue and Tarsdale Avenue. Rubino's is the other local pharmacy and has been in place for over half a century. Note the condition of the trolley tracks, especially at this corner, where most of the Belgian block had been removed and filled in by either concrete or asphalt. This is yet another shot of the 6900 block of Tarsdale Avenue taken last decade. You can really see the wear and tear on the Belgian block in the center of the street. And you can see the conversion of the Rite Aid, the Smarcolas, and the Kessler's buildings into new uses. It is about this time that the community organizations lobbied together and strongly advocated for the removal of the tracks, for a safer cartway, and for the overhead wires and poles to be removed. This final frame of our presentation depicts Tarsdale Avenue after the track removal but before the installation of the Victorian light scheme. While many will lament that Tarsdale Avenue has seen better days, there is still a great core to build on here in Tacony. As our Community Development Corporation works towards the revitalization of Tarsdale Avenue and Longshore Avenue, many other improvements are greatly anticipated. Dr. Genovese at Tacony Chiropractic Center will be building a new property on the site of the PGW explosion, which will feature ground level office space and second floor residential space. 
The new Engine 38 Firehouse will be built in 2012, hopefully opening in early 2013 at the corner of McGee and Keystone. Ongoing Interstate 95 improvements will help traffic flow in the community and strong monitoring by the community associations, including the Taconi Civic Association and Taconi Business Association, will help protect and preserve land uses in Taconi. An active historical society is working on creating a historic district in what's known as the Distant Estate, and the future is considered as bright as ever here in Taconi as we use our rich history as a tool for future revitalization. Thank you for your attendance at our slideshow today.